David, AutoCAD 2010 has several great hatch enhance enhancements. Well, they've been enhancing hatch for a while. So a couple of things that came before the ability to create separate hatch objects. Big one, the ability to be able to define the hatch origin. As an architect, I use hatch patterns, for example, to show brick on an elevation. I can make sure that the brick starts in the exact spot on the elevation that it needs to. So being able to define the hatch origin was a big one for me. And that was in 2006? 2006, I believe. Before that, it was quite the process. Oh, it really it? was. You had, to re, you had to reposition the UCS every time before you hatched. And now it's just as easy it's as a couple a clicks in the It's just one selection in the dialog box. Perfect. Yeah. So it made using Hatch from for the things that I use it for much easier. Great. And I think around that time, didn't we add the gap to or the boundary gap? I'm not quite could... sure when the boundary gap came in, but of course that's been enhanced in 2010 now. One of the problems is if you've got a gap in the boundary, trying to find that gap. So now in 2010, I get these nice little red circles that will display on screen that show me exactly where the gap is. And then of course I can control the uh, Hatch gap setting. If I really do want the hatch pattern to fill that area, even though there's a gap in that, I can tell AutoCAD now to go ahead and fill it, even though I know there's a gap in there. Perfect. And what about grip editing? Well, Not so that, that, there's one that even crept up on me. It's so intuitive that I thought it had been there all, all the time. And what we're talking about is when you've got a non-associative hatch pattern. So that pat hatch pattern is no longer associated with the boundary. Because, of course, when it's associated with the boundary, if you edit the boundary, the hatch pattern is going to update. But when it's a non-associative hatch, you can now select the hatch pattern and then grip edit the hatch pattern even though there's no boundary associated with it. And before you pretty much had to erase you it and start over. You pretty over. much had to erase it and start over. Yeah, again. great yeah. improvements to hatches. It, it really is. Now, there, the other one that's in there, though, is being able to find the hatch area. So here's one that people come to me, and it's, not, it's really not just hatch area, but this is one that I have people ask all the time. They want to create the prop, lay out a polyline, for example, the property, and they want to find out exactly how many acres is inside that piece of property. So I can attach an object property as a field, and I, if I've hatched in that boundary, then I can have it report the hatch area. But if it's a closed polyline, I can have that field simply report back the area enclosed inside of that polyline. And then if I edit the boundary of the polyline, the area that's showing up as text in my drawing because it's a field is going to update automatically. So I can do it with hatch area or I could do it just as the area in, enclosed inside that polyline. So it's easy to create and easy to update. It's incredibly easy to create. Accurate data. And it'll update automatically when the drawing changes. Perfect. Yep. All right. Thanks, David. You're welcome.